So just random contract jobs until I discovered this company called Odeo, which was uh, run by Evan Williams, and Biz Stone was uh, joining in a few months. And it was a consumer podcasting company. And I had never written a resume before. I had no interest in podcasting whatsoever. Um, but I was a really good programmer, and I wanted to understand the consumer side of the internet. A lot of what I was doing was in the back end, and while it would touch my mom and her life, it would be so in an indirect way. My mom may take, take a taxi cab uh, in, in New York City and may touch my software, or buy a ticket to Alcatraz and may touch the software, but it wasn't direct. So I wanted to learn about being more direct in that interaction. So I went to work with Ev and Biz, and I quickly learned that no one else there enjoyed podcasting either. Um, so that was interesting. No one was, really, no one was really excited to build the product or build the tool, and they weren't consumers of the tool, so we weren't building something that we love to use. Um, so it created an interesting situation which allowed for other ideas to bubble up. And <coughs> In uh, late 2005, early 2006, we all kind of broke up into separate groups. And we, we were given the assignment of come up with an idea of something you'd like to work on. And the first thing that came to my mind was this, this idea uh, back in 2000. Um, but now, in 2005, 2006, we had SMS. I could actually send an SMS message from uh, singular to Verizon. That was, that was very, very new to the United States, and I was in love with the technology. It's, you know, it degrades gracefully to every single device, even the cheapest devices, and it has this beautiful constraint of 160 characters, and it doesn't really work all the time, um, and it's really rough around the edges. I love stuff like that. So I brought up this idea, what if we could just use SMS? You could send what you're doing. It would go out in real time, to all the people who are interested in hearing it, and then it would be archived on the web. You could also enter it from the web, and it would be device agnostic, and it would be a whole, a whole thing. It would be awesome. Um, and my two other people in the, in the park, we were on a playground, said it was a good idea, and we presented it to the company. And it uh, took about a week, but then the company finally got behind it, and we were, I was given two weeks, one other programmer, and Biz Stone to write the software end-to-end. -end. And we did it, and at the end of that two weeks, uh, I wrote the first tweet, which was inviting coworkers. And then all the audio coworkers came on. They loved it. And little by little, we took from that company and we brought them on the Twitter project until we spun it out as a separate company and sold off audio. So that's how that sort of visualization and early desire to see the world led into Twitter, which is still a desire for me is to. Like now we have more and more people using it all over the world, and it's even faster to see what's happening and what's unfolding in the world. But it really comes down to that curiosity about what's happening right now everywhere, and, and really being the pulse of what's happening right now everywhere, and being able to point to every single medium. 